Hi friends, in Planet Earth Dating it's Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. In both the Lynn Life and the Jamie Body Mind, the authorized souls remain only child souls from the deeper, denser dimensions, and all other souls from all other dimensions, as long as the souls are already living by the many search for truth rules already given to the search for truth community by wiser minds above all of us. And that makes two important points. And the first point is that uh, discrimination isn't involved here, that our actions show who and what we really are. And if souls are living by the search for truth rules, then they are welcome here. And if they're not living by the search for truth rules, then they're not welcome here. The second point being that souls come in all the time who aren't living by the search for truth rules. That's true. Very, very few souls are living by the search for truth rules. And that's okay. There isn't anything that we have found in all these years to stop that from happening. We say it clearly, and then the karmic record should reflect that souls are, we call it body snatching. Yeah, that's right. For whom is the message? And why do you ask? And what now to stop the destruction in a fair and just way? Somebody's asking, what about the child souls? And why do you let them have, they're saying like a free pass. That's right. And we're we're saying that because we think that children who are trying to get to God should be allowed to stay in safe places. Oh, that's right. For whom is the message? Why do you ask? What now to stop the destruction in a fair and just way? And they're talking about these souls who have been uh, hanging out here lately who seem to be interested in finding a way to provide a soft landing for I guess spirit world society by living through human host lives. That's right. And as long as that leads to stopping the destruction in a fair and just way. We're okay with that, That's but true. we think that it's likely to lead to looking for loopholes to yeah, continue things that are actually pivotal components of the destructive engine. So we don't really, as much as we ourselves would personally appreciate a soft landing, we don't really think that that's what the situation calls for in this work. If that happens uh, tangentially, that's delightful. And we cannot use that as a search term. We can't head for that. We have to head for stopping the destruction in a fair and just way. For him is the message. Why do you ask? For him is the message. Why do you ask what now to stop the destruction in a fair, fair and, and just, just way. way? They're talking about homesteading. Yeah, that's true. And how in this COVID era, COVID-19, uh, the economic shutdown as a result of the first wave of economic shutdowns as a result of COVID-19 right. is uh, coming to an end. There's a test, an experiment being run on a grand scale, a planetary scale, uh, various ways of reopening society and lots of different uh, organizing structures, that means governments are going about it lots of different ways and we'll find out what works and what doesn't work and it, really that's it's a delightful process because we have many countries and many states and many municipalities uh, and they're all going about it differently in that's their own right. individual ways and so we'll get to find out what works and what doesn't work and that's that's wonderful scientific exploration on a global scale with a pandemic exactly for him is the message. Why do you ask and what now to stop 
the destruction and they're still talking about homesteading That's and they're, what they're, they're saying how helpful it's going to be to higher powers to have some humans who survive what's coming uh, and they mean in some period of time it's hard to tell what period of time that doesn't mean immediately but obviously since there's no um, diminishment of the carbon carbon emissions um, we're going to just blast right past the one and a half degrees Celsius tipping point and probably blast past the four degrees Celsius exactly. tipping point probably hitting a nine degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature uh, increase over pre-industrial baselines and that's, that's right that's a fast destruction and that means society is going to pull apart under strains of drought and famine it's that's going right. to happen it's already happening it's not when is it going to happen it's it's already happening you just have to look at Central America and Myanmar and other places that are being destroyed already it, that's, that's right. what's going on so the question is how fast is it going to hit uh, our street? Every us, every we, every I, every me. When is it going to matter to me, quote unquote, in a real and personal way? And what they're talking about is starting to homestead. And they're talking, this presence, this soul is talking about how Mother Mary seems to love suburbia. That's and right. it's kind of marveling at that and turning yes. that over like a uh, like a jewel yeah and talking about how with suburbia you do have a little plot of land and you can create your little food forest that's and right and you can plant your fruit fruit trees get them in the ground first because it can take five years for a fruit tree to bear fruit depending on what kind of fruit tree and where you live etc but it takes a while so get them in the ground so that they can be growing while you are doing your other things by the way we have our first pineapple in our new food forest That's coming right. up right now we're very excited it's been three years pineapples take three years to produce fruit it's been three years and we have a pineapple coming on we're very excited we used to have maybe 40 pineapples in our pineapple patch that's right just about all from the grocery store pineapple tops <laughs> The point being that when we are feeling capable about raising our own food, we're less panicked and we're not as likely to do ridiculous things saying we had to, exactly. we have no choice. So this uh, art of raising food as two generations lost for the most part, meaning you get to learn it again, but there's plenty of resources start somewhere do something start reading uh, bloggers and youtubers who talk about food forests and permaculture and those will get you going oh, that's right and organic gardening it's very important to go organic especially during an era of social collapse because if you're dependent on chemicals and for some reason you can't get that chemical because the distribution chains are breaking down as is inevitable that's right then you'll wish you had learned about organic farming while you had the chance. So to consider homesteading uh, research as a new hobby and to just yes. start researching it, reading things and watching videos on homesteading and permaculture and organic gardening so that you come to feel comfortable with the ideas and maybe after a year you won't feel overwhelmed with the concepts and along the same line this speaker whoever it is uh, is highly recommending that you volunteer for Habitat for Humanity I hear you. to learn some useful skills because most of us are two generations gone from having actual useful hands-on skills and obviously some people do still have them but uh, most people don't. That's right. So to learn some useful skills, volunteer for Habitat for Humanity. We did. And if you're a woman, you're going to have to find a woman build Habitat for Humanity job site or they'll just put you in the corner sorting screws and nails. Oh yeah. 
So you won't learn anything if you go to a mainstream Habitat for Humanity job site. You have to find a women build where there's only women on the site, mm -hmm. no men on the site. And then you will learn. For him it's a message. Why do you ask? For him it's a message. Why do you ask? They keep pointing to this message that has come in multiple times today uh, about things that haven't come together. For example, in one of our food forest <laughs> areas on our tiny farm, we are uh, two and a half years into the effort of that area and we wasted a lot of time trying to grow blueberry bushes and blackberry bushes That's which we right. researched very heavily we didn't shortcut the research process we're a research queen <laughs> the inner CPA lives on and we research everything quite thoroughly from multiple sources looking at it many different ways for weeks and then finally say all right well this is our best option let's move forward and we moved forward with some blueberry plants, four different varieties in case some varieties didn't do well and That's one right. variety did very poorly, but the others did better. Better meaning they clung to life exactly. <laughs> and produced a net crop of maybe three berries yeah. through the whole blueberry patch. So yeah. that's, a, that's a poor use of acreage. That's right. And the blackberries, they're too nasty. They're not good garden friends. Their thorns are wicked, and they don't produce fruit this the first year. They put out a what's called a uh, primocane, and the primocane is very pretty, but it doesn't fruit. And the next year, that primocane will have become a floricane, and the floricanes do flower, hence the name, and produce fruit if you have pollinators, which the pollinators are dying. So we have discovered that uh, blackberries also are not a good use of acreage, and their thorns are wicked. Exactly. And the floricanes have wicked, wicked thorns. The primocanes will kind of suck you in because their <laughs> thorns aren't so bad, and you think, oh, this is acceptable. Yeah. And then the next year when it's time for the fruit, it's like, what is this wicked beast that we have <laughs> nurtured in our midst? <laughs> So they're coming up. And it makes it really hard to tend the area. It, it makes it hard to tend the garden. And the gardener has to be able to tend the garden or it, it doesn't go well. So the point is to start somewhere, do something. And many people feel comfortable just reading and watching videos about it. And to start doing that, you can at least do that right now today. And after you've watched videos for a month on food forests and permaculture, maybe you'll want to do something about it. And if you've been volunteering at Habitat for Humanity for a couple months, maybe the idea of building a chicken coop won't freak you out. And you can see our little chicken village that, well, kind of well, sort of. Well, kind of sort of. Because we also try to make it pretty. We think that beauty also counts. That's right. So to build things that are functional and also pretty. We think that souls appreciate beauty. That we is We would true. say we know that to be true. So we keep getting this message today about how we lost the better part of two and a half years in that part of our tiny farm because we had tried to grow berries and it wasn't the right use of the space and we were trying to find the mistake what were the errors that we had made that had led to this kind of delay and it's not that it's a total loss because the banana plants are coming on and the fig trees are coming on yeah, and the elderberries right. are looking like we might get a decent sized crop this year and the soil is much much richer and the soil is richer and it's all much more workable so it's not a total loss but it wasn't the most efficient way to go about it exactly and so we're trying to figure out what we had messed up how had we made those mistakes? What were the errors? And all we can find is just an accumulation of tiny mistakes that occurred over maybe 40 years in this life, and I don't, something less than 28 years in that exactly. life. 
so these accumulations of tiny errors yeah, that's right. and each of them feels small like a grain of sand but they they added up to a waste of a lot of water and energy and effort and money of buying the wrong kinds of plants exactly so we know that that's important and this accumulation of tiny errors matters and then we also had this incident this morning that they're pointing to right now where uh, one of the neighbors has a big dog that gets into it with Baxter and the big dog got off her leash and she came uh, to attack Baxter during the morning bike ride. That's right. Making a very exciting uh, moment. Yes. And bizarrely, the neighbor came back later not to apologize but it, and it's possible we misinterpreted what was going on, but it seemed like That's he true. came to collect an apology for having his dog attacking us in front of our own farm. Yes. And that's weird. And we don't know what it means, but we can feel that it somehow ties into yeah, what we're that's right. supposed to put on the table today. And it has to do with stopping the destruction in a fair and just way That's and looking right. for that as opposed to a soft landing and we think the idea is that if we as a interdimensional collective actually try to stop the destruction in a fair and just way then tangentially as a natural product there will be a soft landing but if we try for a soft landing the whole thing will go helter skelter it's exactly. not going to work well exactly. and so we've got to try it's paradoxical as are many things in divine energy healing paradoxical that if we try for a soft landing we probably won't get it if we try for stopping the destruction in a fair and just way maybe maybe there'll be a soft landing so everybody learn homesteading skills and useful skills try to learn the useful skills it's two generations gone for this life we have to try and remember things we learned from our grandfather and we're coming up on 62 years old yep. and we have to think about things we learned from our grandfather he was born in 1900 that's right so it, it, don't expect for this to be an error-free process we guess that's the point expect you're going to make mistakes even with all the research that you do even if you call the extension office and research the university websites on the right plants and the right planning schedules and then go to the nurseries and cross-reference <laughs> everything <laughs> and then check your varieties and then go to the gardening blogs and ask <laughs> them what they say. It's still going to go wrong. You're still going to have things that went wrong. That's right. But to don't don't make that into a bad thing. To consider that life is a grand experiment, and here we are as a planet experimenting on a grand scale with a global pandemic. And isn't that exciting? And to remember that there's a three to five <laughs> week. Uh, lag between the start of the experiment and when the results start to become apparent because of the incubation periods and the spread periods and the uh, pace at which businesses start to reopen. So right about the end of June, we'll yeah. start to have some interesting information about how this reopening works, what works and what doesn't work. And we can look at various and sundry municipalities, states, and countries and see how they've gone about it and see what the results are. For him is a message. Why do you ask? Like start somewhere, do something, don't expect it to go well, don't let it dissuade you. Have an attitude of experimentation. Hey, we're doing it at planetary level. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll get to see. All right. All right.